everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah and today we have such an exciting video. I'm, I've just been waiting to film this one. And no, it is not going little free library uh, hunting, which I normally do when I start in the car. Uh, <laughs> if you read the title, you will know that this video is going to be a week of reading anticipated releases. There have just been so many that have released either in the last month or this month and they're gonna release this month. Like just so many great books that I've been so excited to read and haven't because I'm trying to work my way through my physical TBR and behave and not get new books. But you know what? I can't, I can't contain myself. I really, I really need to read and experience these new books. So the list is very extensive. It got even more extensive yesterday because I received an email from one of my like favorite authors right now, Alexis Menard. She wrote House of Bane and Blood and the sequel is coming out and I got told that I got sent the arc to, um, I'm trying to find it for you guys. For City of Mirth and Malice. I was like, just like the scream that left my body when I saw that email. I was so excited and I was like, can I start this video now? But I couldn't because I had another book to finish. It is what it is. So we have that on the list. And then I think I have at least three or four others on the list some of which don't get released until the end of the month, so I probably won't get to those in this video. But yeah, I have a lot on it, and there are some that I don't own physical copies of currently, so figured we can go and try and look for those physical copies together, and then we'll start the week off strong with that ARC uh, edition that I'm just, I'm so, I'm so amazed and excited, and I just can't contain myself, so. We're gonna go, we're gonna start at a small local used bookstore, see if I can find some of the books that way. And then if not, at some point we'll get over to a Barnes and Noble, but this one is really close to JD's house and I like to support the smaller businesses before I go to the bigger chain stores. So we will see if I can find any of them. I think I'm just gonna leave it a surprise right now what those books are that we're looking for and then I will share if I actually find them. Alrighty. So that did not go as planned. Your girl forgot to check whether or not that store was open and it wasn't on Mondays. So I went and got my eyebrows done instead because <laughs> they needed done and it is what it is. I have to go back to my place tonight so I might just leave a little bit early and stop by a Target. The one near my house is supposed to have two of the books that I'm looking for so fingers crossed on that. They're also running their buy to get one free sale so might as well. Might as well. I know I just got done saying that I don't like going to chain stores and I'm saying now I'm saying I'm gonna go to Target, but the one I tried isn't open, so here we are. You know, we do what we gotta, and if there's gonna be a sale and I can get a book for free, I'm gonna do that. So I will see you guys either when I start reading or when I get to the store. I guess it depends which one comes first. I'm kinda running out of time today, so we will see. <sighs> Alrighty, as you can see, I finally made it home and it was an interesting shopping experience in Target because they were like, no, we don't have the one book. And I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure you do. I looked online, like I made sure to check before I came in here. So it was a little frustrating, but I found what I was looking for. So without further ado, I will show you guys. So I picked up two books while I was there. These are ones that did recently release. I forget exactly when, but sometime within like I think the, this one is a, uh, we're just going to go straight into it, then I'll explain. This is uh, The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. This is the same author as The Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy, which I absolutely loved. I also loved Five Survive, which was another standalone by her. So I was really, really excited when I heard that she was coming out with a new one. This is a completely different world than the others are set in, and it's about an 18-year-old named Belle who has lived her whole life in the shadows of her mother's mysterious disappearance. 16 years ago, Rachel Price vanished and a young Belle was the only witness, but she has no memory of it. Rachel is gone, long presumed dead, and Belle wishes everyone would just move on. The case is dragged up again with a true crime documentary. Belle agrees to become part of it. And then all of a sudden her mother reappears, 
no explanation for where she was and the whole thing starts becoming about where were you what happened why did you not return until now and it just like it because i know how holly jackson's other writing is i know this is going to be fantastic and i love documentaries and podcasts on true crime so like i'm very excited about this this just released within a week i think i think it released last tuesday from when i'm filming this so really really pumped to read this and then kind of in a similar realm we have listen for the lie by amy tintera i found this when i was looking for releases that were going to come out this year back when i was doing bookmas and this just sounded so so good so i was like i have to put this on my radar i think it released within the last month i just haven't gotten to it yet this is another one that is very similar where it's actually a true crime podcast that is sort of unraveling this story and the main part that the only one that i'll read for you guys is what if you thought you murdered your best friend and everyone else thought so too and what if the truth didn't matter so it's saying that Lucy doesn't really remember what happened and she agrees to go on this podcast, listen for the lie, and all these secrets come to light and she starts trying to unravel what happened that night with her friend. So both of these are very highly anticipated reads. I'm absolutely getting to these at some point this week, but like I said, we're starting with City of Martha Malice and we're starting now because I can't wait anymore. I just can't. <laughs> Hi everyone and happy Tuesday. It is officially Tuesday and I just want to come on and do a quick little update for City of Mirth and Malice. I am 25% of the way through. It's on the Kindle. So I think I'm like 130 something pages into it. I forget what it said, but yeah, 25% through and I am loving it. I unfortunately can't go like into too much detail with it because like it's a sequel to a book and I don't want to give anything away, but I'm just loving being back in this world being reminded of the storyline in the original book and just the reason that i love these characters so much that i loved like the main family in this so much and now you're getting to see two of the families working together a little bit more which i really like the way they play off of each other and the fantasy elements in this is just unique in my opinion like i really enjoy the the fantasy of it all and like um for those of you that maybe didn't see me talking about the first one in this world, it's like a, a post-industrial setting and there are people that have no powers and then there are people that are descendants and um, remnants and they pretty much got their powers from the, I think it's six gods? I think there were six gods and they passed their powers on to an immediate descendant and then everybody below them is descendant and they sort of get like not quite as strong of powers as the immediate descendant but they all get different powers and everything and it's just so unique and I love seeing the different elements of like the takes on vampires and benders like elemental benders and learning more about the one uh, remnant family that you really didn't find out too much about in the first one I'm just I'm loving it. I'm loving the pacing of this because you're left with like quite a cliffhanger at the end of the first one and it's um, it's something that really has to be worked through and figured out and she's doing a great job not rushing that process of solving this problem and just moving on to the next thing. She's really working her way through it and building a lot of tension and at the same time also explaining some of the stuff that needed to be explained after the first one that you're like what what just happened like what does this mean for everybody so I'm, I'm really really loving it it has already had some moments that are just really sad and heartbreaking and like it's just it's fantastic I love it so I'm hoping to get a decent chunk of the way through the rest of it today that being said I do have like another video that I'm trying to film so I don't know, like I, I need to work on that one, but I really want to get through the rest of this. So I don't know. I don't know, you're, I'm a little bit of a mess, but I really just, I want to sit down and read. So we're definitely gonna sit down and read for a little bit before I start doing anything else with my day before I have to go to work. So that's where we're at. I have just been going nonstop today. I reorganized all of my books downstairs including some that I brought over from JD's house. Um, that video will be out at some point, I think before this one, but I'm not 
entirely sure when. So potentially before this one, if not, look out for it. It'll come out after this. But uh, yeah, I was doing that. I read for a little bit because I was like, I need a break. And then I got a shower, which is why my hair is wet and everything. I have 45-ish minutes before I have to leave for work. So I am probably going to sit and read for a little bit more and then do my hair. Um, I think I'm like 35, 37% through the book now. So not much further than I was in the beginning, but it just keeps getting better. I'm just really loving, I'm really loving this book. I'm loving being back in this world. I'm gonna be really sad when this book ends, but that's okay. So we are going to get, get back into it. and oh my god it was so so fantastic i i couldn't get over it like ah. i think i'm gonna like save a final review for the end of the video when i can actually put all my thoughts together but i know already it was a five star read it was so freaking good i don't know if i'm ready to start a new book all right it's been all of five minutes and I've gotten over my, I don't know if I want to read again. I think I'm out of my reading slump. Thank freaking God, because that was miserable. Although I am still holding on to the last book that I read. Okay, slight camera angle change because my battery died and I have it plugged, <laughs> plugged in and this is where it reaches. Anyway, um, yeah, we're going to move on to the next book. I'm hoping that I'm going to love it just as much because I have all the good vibes from City of Mirth and Malice, but that is still like just so in my head and I really like I'm so excited to talk about that book once I get like all of my thoughts a little bit more cohesive and everything I probably shouldn't have shared the rating a while because like we'll do a whole thing at the end with the ratings but whatever I think you guys probably could have guessed that that was gonna be my rating for it so anyway the next book I'm gonna read for this video is going to be Bride by Ellie Hazelwood I know this isn't like a super recent recent release like some of the other ones and I know that you're like Hannah you just went and bought two other books for this video why are we not reading those? This this was on my list from the beginning. I just already owned it and I've been wanting to read it since it came out. I put off reading it because one of my friends from Instagram, she wanted to read it with me and do a buddy read. So we had to wait until this month to get to it. So it's been super anticipated for me. This is uh, Allie Hazelwood's first sort of venture into fantasy and I know it's about vampires and werewolves and that's about all I know. But I'm excited to see what the hype is about and I've never read an Allie Hazelwood book, so. I'm very curious. Hi guys, so it is now Friday. As you can see, I just recently, <gasps> excuse me, just recently got out of the shower, did some stuff around the house that needed to be done, and I figured I would read for a little bit while I let my hair air dry and everything. Um, I know I didn't really update too much yesterday. I just wasn't really feeling the book that much, I guess. Like, it's not bad. I've never read an Allie Hazelwood book. I'm really enjoying her writing style. It's really easy to read. Uh, she has really funny moments. Like, just some of her writing is really amusing and stuff. She does throw in a lot of very big, like, more scientific words that I don't know how to pronounce. Um, shouldn't surprise me too much since I know her other book books are STEM related, uh, but they sometimes seem a little bit out of place, like just throwing them in there. I don't know. Maybe that's just a me thing. Uh, but yeah, I felt like I just was struggling to get into the storyline a little bit. The whole premise of the book is that it's a female vampire who is like in a family of like more elite vampires. And when she was younger, she was sent to the human territory as like collateral to try and keep the peace between their two species and now that she's older um she's agreed to marry 
the alpha of the werewolf community and try and broker peace between their species because they's never they have never gotten along. So she's like constantly like giving of herself and just doesn't really feel like she fits in anywhere. Her whole reason for why she agreed to the marriage it, it is sort of more than just protecting her own species. Um, and that storyline is really interesting. I just feel like it's taking a while to get into any of like the really truly fascinating parts. Like the reason that she's in werewolf territory, I feel like that's a very slow moving plot line trying to uncover stuff related to that. And I feel like the uh, tension and everything between her and her new husband just wasn't really where I wanted it to be. It just felt like it was really slow. I have about like 170 pages I think left and I feel like I only just recently got to a point where I'm like okay things are getting really good like stuff's picking up and everything so it's not bad per se I just felt like it was really slow moving so that's part of it is why I wasn't really updating yesterday but I am excited to see where this goes see if it continues to get really decent like I said I have about 170 pages left so we're gonna try and breeze through the rest of this hopefully before I have to leave for the day to go home and go to work and then we can start my next one so yeah that's the plan for today so far also I know people like floppy books and like this is a floppy book but when I lay it down flat the cover sticks up and it drives me nuts like I don't know I'd rather have a stiff book and not have my covers be all willy-nilly but Anyway, yeah, that's totally not important at all, but felt the need to share. Ooh, also, forgot to mention this. At the top of the chapters, we're going to show you a chapter in the beginning. That way I'm not accidentally giving anything away. There's, like, italicized parts, and this one says this marriage is going to be a problem. She is going to be a problem. And each one is internal thoughts for, I already forget what his name is, Lo, which is the, uh, the werewolf alpha and her new husband. It's stays in a single POV, but each chapter has those little italicized parts that give some insight into his thoughts and everything. And I love those. I normally prefer dual POV in romance books, but I'm actually okay with this, like getting just the little snippets of his thoughts and everything at the beginning of each chapter. I really, I think it's a unique way of doing it and I'm really, really enjoying it. So not at all an update about Bride, but I do need to really finish it because I just got this edition of Powerful in the mail. I didn't think I was going to get it this, this soon, um, but this is one of my other most anticipated reads. So I think I already know which one I'm going to do next because I'm so excited about this. So now I really, I need to finish Bride soon. Hello, hello, and happy Saturday at this point. This weekend is flying by. This week has flown by. I feel like I just... I don't know what I did with my week, but here we are. Uh, so between getting to read yesterday before going to work and reading a little bit when I got home this morning, I was able to finish Bride by Ellie Hazelwood. Like I said, I'm going to do sort of like a big wrap up at the end for all of my thoughts, but I will say it got better. It just, it really did take quite a while to get into it. So that's all I'll say on that one. Now that we are awake and I got some other stuff done, I am immediately jumping into my next book. I already told you guys what it was. It's gonna be powerful by Lauren Roberts. I am so excited to read this novella and to get to see more of Adina's character. She was introduced in Powerless and this book is supposed to just be a little bit more of her story. Some of the events that happened uh, while other events were taking place in Powerless so that you get to see sort of like what goes on with her and just get a little bit more of her character because she is such a wholesome character and she's funny and I just really enjoyed seeing her in Powerless. So yeah, I'm really excited to get to know her personality a little bit more with this book. And it's a short one. It's only 200 something pages, I think. Uh, yeah, like about 250 pages since it's a novella. So I feel like it shouldn't take me that long to get through. But we'll see. That's the goal. The goal is to get through this 
maybe before I have to go to work, I have about three hours. I feel like I should be able to accomplish that. And then we'll see if I can do one more for this video. But right now I just really wanna enjoy this book and being in this world again. We just got to see how Adina and Peyton met before any of the stuff happens in Powerless. And it, I'm really glad that she put that in there. It's such a cute, formative moment for these two and their friendship and it's 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 funny because it's like Adina can't steal but she's super poor she's like lives on her own so she needs to steal to like live sometimes and Peyton's really good at stealing but she's not really good at taking care of anything else so Adina's like if you steal for me I will help make clothing for you because Adina is a seamstress and wants to design and make clothing and their characters are really different and you you find that out in powerless but like they're extremely different characters and different motivations um but they sort of just come together because they're trying to survive and trying to live and i think that's just such a wholesome start to the two of these characters and their story together i am already halfway through this and i haven't even been reading that long like i've been distracted like i was on my phone i was eating i was just doing doing stuff before i managed to start this so it's only been like half an hour, 45 minutes, and I'm already halfway through. My problem with novellas is that I always want there to be more to the story, but like, you, it, it, there's only so many pages in a novella. You can't go into great detail. So, you know, you skip days, you skip like some of the, uh, the behind the scenes moments that maybe you don't get to see. And I don't know. I, that's not to say that I don't enjoy this book because I am enjoying the book. I just, the problem is that I, I enjoyed it enough that I want more. Um, but anyway, so it, it, like I said, it follows Adina's story and there's actually a male character, I mean male character in this as well. His name is, she calls him Mac. Um, it says what his name, his real name, I think it's Makoto is how you would pronounce it, but I'm not hundred percent sure. She calls him Mac and he has a connection to another character in Powerless that is going through the trials with Peyton. So he has this connection and wants to find his way into the palace. So he uh, aligns himself with Adina and they start sort of working together to uh, figure that out. So they're both working together, they both want to see the people they care about one more time before the trials start because they don't really know how things are going to go. And they're just forming this connection. I, I like their interactions, but again, I want more of it. Like I want them to be more fleshed out and get to see those interactions more because it, it just like, you could tell there's a connection there, but because it's a novella and everything, it like it just feels like it's moving really fast. So I just, I don't know, I wish there were more. He helps her with a lot of stuff that she struggles with. Like I said, her and Peyton are very different people. So where Peyton is very much into knife to the throat, quite literally fight to the death, like Adina is the exact opposite and she doesn't really want to partake in violence. She doesn't know how to fight. She wants to believe that she can talk to people and ration with them and uh, it's just not really how life in the slums works, but she's always had Peyton to take care of her. And now that Peyton's not there, she she's kind of on her own. So Mac's been helping her with a lot of different stuff and sort of teaching her the things that need to be taught. And I love those types of scenes. They're some of my, my favorite. Um, they're, they're ones that like, I wish they would happen in real life. Like I wish somebody could have wrapped their arms around me and taught me how to throw a punch or, or like do different stuff like that. Um, alas, not the person, the type of person that I am. I figured out how to do that on my own, but I love to imagine those moments. So reading them is really fun and cute. And yeah, I'm just, I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm kind of sad that this is gonna be over so quickly. I have less than 40 pages in this. And I don't know if I want to finish it. Potential spoiler for if you haven't read Powerless, I'm still going to try to keep it vague. But knowing the way that Adina's story goes in Powerless, 
I just don't want to put myself through the emotional damage that I am going to end up encountering finishing this book and seeing the way that Mac responds to it. I did not anticipate crying today over a book. But I can't not finish it either because I have to know. So here we are. And it sucks. <laughs> gonna suck. So I finished Powerful. Tell me why I put myself through binging a book for like an hour, hour and a half to fall in love with the characters and to fall in love with the story just to have like put myself through the emotional pain that I did at the end of this book when I knew that it was gonna happen but for some odd reason I was like maybe it'll be different. I was really, really hoping that seeing something in her point of view and Mac's point of view, I was like, maybe there's something that like isn't shown in Powerless and like, like a, like a, a twist, like a fake ending, like a, this, this isn't actually what happened. Everybody thought it was, but like jokes on you, jokes on me because that's not how that happened. But. <clears throat> I, uh, I'm gonna need a break from that before I want to really talk about it. So I'm glad that I get that before the wrap up at the end, just so I can recover from it a little bit. Um, so we're just gonna go straight into the next book in the hopes that I am not so sad anymore. And we're gonna read The Reappearance of Rachel Price. I was between this and um, listen, for the lie and I was gonna originally pick that one because it's a little bit shorter and like the print in this is astoundingly small um so I was like this is gonna take longer and I really want to be able to finish this by the end of the video but like it's also a video one of my like most anticipated reads like newer releases and I think listen for the lie has been out a little bit longer this was just super recently released and it is such an anticipated read for me I will 100% get to that book at some point soon but just probably not for this video. So we're gonna read this. I think I mentioned earlier, this is the newest book by Holly Jackson, who wrote A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. This is set in a different setting than the other books, completely different characters. And it follows a girl whose mother went missing years prior. She released this documentary about it and then all of a sudden her mom shows back up again. And now they're trying to figure out where she was and what was going on while she was gone. So. I'm sorry if you can hear my very squeaky back door that I left open for the dogs. <laughs> anyway, uh, very different change of pace from Powerful. I think a good, just straightforward mystery intrigue plot will be what I need, hopefully. So we'll see how this one is. I do wanna show you guys the uh, naked hardback, which is really cool. It, like it looks like an old, like missing poster or wanted poster, but says missing like I think that's cool and then I love the the splattering of the paint in these so yeah I don't know I really I thought that was cool I thought it was a good touch for the book so <clears throat> we are going to start that actually I'm just gonna keep this off because I can't stand reading with dust jackets on and uh yeah we'll see we'll see how this one goes I I have high hopes for this and I have high hopes that I'm going to finish the video out with yet another fantastic read because all of them have been great so far. So <laughs> slightly delayed update. It is now actually Monday, which means like I'm done reading for this video, but I did manage to finish the reappearance of Rachel Price yesterday. I just couldn't film at all because I went to my like families for a, a get together for my grandfather's birthday and I had that, so I listened to the audiobook on the way there, on the way back, and then I had work later in the night and just like stuff. I had life stuff, so I couldn't actually.
film me reading this and like my immediate thoughts on it, which I apologize for, but we are here now with my thoughts on it. So we're just gonna get into the wrap up segment of this video at this point. This was a four, maybe a 4.5 star read. It wasn't quite giving five star vibes, but I did still really enjoy this and enjoy the turn that it took at the end. Uh, the main female character in this is really funny in my opinion like she like it's a dry sense of humor funny but she was amusing to me and her outlook on everything was amusing and I think that Holly Jackson did a really good job of capturing a character who went in her entire life thinking that her mother potentially left her voluntarily and then something bad happened um and just the struggle that that would bring and then the dichotomy of her mom coming back home and like this the struggle of I should be happy for this but I, I don't know if I am and I don't know what to do with this because this is such an interruption in the only life that I know so she created a really good character for that and it added to the whole mystery of everything that was going on into the investigation on where Rachel had been and why and how she had returned because you have a, a main female character like a main narrator that is very hesitant to accept why she returns and you're left wondering if like if it's just an unreliable narrator that's that's skewing the storyline or if there really is something else going on and I, I just I think it was really well well done I think my biggest gripe with this book was that there's like a, a segment in here where she throws in like five or six very popular book titles and the reason that they were an issue for me is I, I don't like pop culture references per se so I wasn't a huge fan of that they mentioned COVID which is fine because like that's gonna be something that's always like gonna be a thing now um so that didn't bother me as much but the book titles did because like they were just so in your face pop culture references because they were current popular books and then they also like the person they belonged to wouldn't have read those types of books because they were like, they were geared towards younger audiences. Not like YA per se, some of them were, but just not the person that owned the books. So like that bothered me and it felt like, it just didn't quite make sense to me. It, it definitely took me out of the story for a minute there and I, I didn't appreciate that at all. I know it's such a minor thing, but like that was really truly my biggest gripe with this book. I do feel like the motivation behind, I'm trying to say this without giving stuff away, the motivation behind Rachel's disappearance and the person slash persons responsible for it, um, just I wanted it to be developed a little bit more and explained a little bit more. I just kind of felt like it was thrown out there and it was something that we were left to go oh okay that makes sense but I would have liked to see hints of it as an explanation or or something a little bit more like I, I'm fine with the, who it ended up being in the explanation for all of it as a wrap-up I just didn't like the motivation behind it and I'm hoping that I said all of that in an ambiguous enough way that I'm not giving anything away because like, it could be her, one, like, not her. It could be her, it could be somebody else. It could be no one, it could be one person, it could be two peoples, it could be multiple peoples, like, so when I'm like, I feel like I'm, I'm saying that ambiguously enough, um, just the motivation behind all of it seemed to be an issue. But I did really enjoy this. I mean, I read it in a day, guys, so it's definitely a great book. There was just something something missing to give it that five star quality, but just another great reminder that I will always read a Holly Jackson book. <laughs> so next up, we're just gonna go in descending order now. Ascending, descending. I don't know how you would look at it if you're starting from the end and moving to the beginning. Whichever, we're going with powerful now. As you guys know, as you guys saw, this was a five star read for me. This was everything that I wanted in a story for Adina's character minus the ending for Adina's character. Um, and if you guys haven't read Powerless, haven't 
no idea what her story sort of goes towards. I don't want to give anything away and my reactions to this could potentially, so maybe just skip this part a little bit. I'm still gonna try to talk ambiguously enough, but like, it's still gonna maybe give you some indications on what happened. Uh, that being said, yeah, I adored this. I wanted it to be longer. I wanted more fleshed out storyline between her and Mac and not even fleshed out, but I just wanted to see more of it. Like I wanted those interactions and, and to like, I just loved, I loved it. I loved their interactions. I loved that we got a female character that wasn't the strong, take no crap character that Peyton is in Powerless. I liked getting the like more or less opposite of that and seeing her try to survive in the slums and her try to experience her own relationship and her own storyline because she was always so connected to Peyton and in Powerless, a lot of her storyline revolves around Peyton's storyline. So it was it was fantastic seeing her own storyline and just, just the way this ended. Like I said, I knew how it was gonna end and it was heartbreaking, it was gut-wrenching. Um, but it was still written so, so well. And it, it, was, it was beautiful. Like I, I don't have another way to describe the ending I felt so bad for Mac and just everything he experienced, but the way that he handled it was, uh, it was incredible. I'm trying to find one of the quotes that I really like. This, this, I'm trying to debate if I should read this because it's gonna, it's definitely gonna be a spoiler. If you're never gonna read Powerful or Powerless and you just don't care, you can listen to this, or if you just don't care anyway, yeah. It says, in the end, it was all light and dark, loud and soft. I knew nothing but the memory of those I loved, one a friend, the other unfinished. And that alone is what I took with me in the next life. But I watched warm and bright and high above, just as he promised. And I like that little glimpse into what her ending was like for her. And that even though things went the way they did, she was still happy and she was still a Dina. And it just, it, it meant a lot to me. Like this book just meant a lot to me, which I didn't think was possible in such a short time span, but really, really great book. So we're gonna move on from that before I start crying again. Um, then we have Bride by Ali Hazelwood. This was only a three star read for me. And I feel like it's being a little bit generous. I just, Maybe some of it was the hype surrounding it. I really expected to love this book. And I didn't hate it by any means. It just felt like there was no, like it took so long to get to anything. It took so long to get to the tension between the two main characters. And that's what you expect with like oh, a marriage of convenience and arranged marriage. And it just didn't feel like they had any connection. And even once you got the tension and stuff, like I just wasn't vibing with it. I just didn't really, see the like they just weren't great together in my opinion like there are some characters where you feel the connection you feel the tension i just didn't feel that for these two characters um so that was a little disappointing and some of like the subplot in here is supposed to have like a bit of a mystery element to it suspense element and i feel like that wasn't developed well at all I know that Allie Hazelwood typically writes romances and that could be the reason why it just wasn't as gripping as it should be if it's going to be part of the plot like that and some of the motivation behind uh, Misery's actions and everything. So I just I felt like some of that was underdeveloped and I, I don't know. This was her first fantasy book so I'm willing to give it a little bit of grace. I think that's why I gave it the three stars instead of like two or two and a half. And there's a chance that like, the next book or whatever is going to be a little bit more well-developed. I'd probably read the next one just to see because I'm curious and because I do like the werewolf vampire storyline. I just, this one just kind of fell a little flat for me, which was disappointing. And then lastly, we have the first book that I read, which was City of Mirth and Malice. And you guys saw me absolutely gushing over that. I did 
a lot of uh, talking about that already, so I might not go too much into this, but that was another five-star read. I adored the first book. I think the second book was just, like, even better. It was The plot line was so well thought out and the pacing was so well done to resolve all the problems. You got more world, world building uh, uh, that you didn't even know that you necessarily wanted. You got more of a conclusion for multiple characters, storylines, and explanations for why they, they are the way they are, and just the magical elements, the fantasy elements, the tension between the two main characters, it was all done so, so well. And she sets up for another great story afterwards without leaving you with no answers. Like the first one gave you some answers, but there was such a cliffhanger that you're like, I need the next one to understand what's going on to really get the rest of this story. This one was almost more or less completed with an opening to continue into a new world and stuff. If that, I don't know how to explain that any better, but I think she is going to do more. I think she was building this world as like single duologies between two of the main characters. And then I think she's gonna move into two, two more characters, but it's still gonna be in the same world if I remember her explanation properly. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Like I said before, if you guys haven't read this, I, I definitely recommend. Uh, and like, it just, she's a great reminder that you really gotta branch out and try to read indie authors that are putting their books out there in other ways other than traditional publishers and everything. Like, yes, her book is now picked up by Barnes and Noble, but I think like, I don't think she's through a traditional publisher still. She's still indie publishing. It's just that Barnes and Noble has a hold of it. But like, she, yeah, she's just a great example of why you gotta, you gotta branch out. Like she, she's one of the first indie authors I read and she's fantastic. So anyway, without more rambling, that is the end of this video, reading some of my most anticipated reads. It was a great video. Like Bride was the lowest one that I had and I wasn't, it, it wasn't that big of a letdown. Like it, I, like I know I said it was, but it wasn't like, it was like a one star read. It just wasn't what I wanted it to be. So still a fantastic video. I know I had some, I had some other ones that I didn't get to in this. I listened to the lie or listened for the lie by Amy Tintera and A Touch of Chaos, which is the last book in the Touch of Darkness series that was recently released. I will probably be reading those very soon because I did really want to read them. Uh, you know, just only have so much time in a week and I feel like four books, three and a half, if you want to call it the novella a half is a really good reading week so i'm pretty happy with it i'm glad to be back in the swing of reading this i think pulled me out of the reading slump that i was getting into or was already just in so that's fantastic too i know i said i was going to be done rambling and i, I i'm still going so <laughs> i have to get up and actually get on with my day change out of this these sweatshirts and like do something so we are now done. <laughs> if you like this video, please subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know one of your most anticipated reads that you've read recently or one that you were looking forward to, and I will see you guys again very, very soon. Bye!